guys, welcome back to HPL. Nathan, that's Admiral Zamora here with the Tan and Grace. We just saw Purple take off his first game uh, off of Era in this match. And Era kind of, again, once mixing up his strategies, I think, very well uh, with that Hunter pick. But, uh, you know, keeping those two Leopard Gnomes in his hand maybe cost him a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just blown away with how well Era has just queued up his decks in the HPL so far. He's kept his opponents guessing while queuing up the correct decks against what his opponents have been doing against him. He's really done his homework here in HPL, and it's starting to show through. I just really wish he'd get you know a little more rewarded for it. It's hard when you're playing that well, making the correct deck, making the correct deck choices, and you're not getting rewarded with wins. Yeah, Purple also kind of doing his homework here, though. I mean, he obviously had checked out the fact that, that Arrow was tending to go for those uh, control strategies, had two copies of Big Game Hunter in his Druid deck. Is he going to do it again? I don't know, but Game 2 is about to get underway. Purple versus Era. I just find myself always excited about what Era is going to queue up every round. I, don't, I, I just love it. Yeah, Purple just going to stick with Druid here, and Era looks like he swapped over to Paladin. Guys, you can get out there on Twitter, use that hashtag HPL, let everyone know. Think if you if, if you would have played that game differently than Era would have, or if you like that Purple's trying to target these control strategies that maybe Era that he's looking for Era to queue up here. But once again, that's Druid deck has a big game hunter in opening hand. He's going to pitch the entire thing. Yeah, guys, use that hashtag. Let us know what you would queue up if you're Era this turn. Game. Well, I can tell you that two shielded mini bots is not a bad start, and look at that already something interesting in here. A blessing of might. That's a pretty that's an excellent couple, I think, with something like Shield and Mini Bot. But against Druid, I think you can get a little bit punished for it. We see an abusive sergeant coming in here. I have to think that this is a much more aggressive strategy than your it might look like right now. Yeah, this looks like a very aggressive Paladin deck, like the Paladin Rush decks that we've seen that were popular, you know, I've seen them popular as long, long back as a year ago, you know, back when I was first playing Hearthstone and learning the game. But it's interesting to see Eric queue up this, a very good draw here for turn three if he wants to. Um, it's going to, you know, play into swipe a little bit here over the next turn or two, but it's still really good turn three when he didn't have a ton of great options. But it's interesting to see if he brought this to play against Rogue from Purple. Yeah, it is going to leave them a little bit vulnerable to swipe here, but this is something you commonly see from aggressive strategies, is that they just want to have questions for their opponents and see if their opponents can answer them. If Purple can't get... Oh my gosh, I was just about to say, if he can't kill all these minions, he could be in trouble, but that is about a picture-perfect draw. But look at this, he's going to continue to remain patient. He wants even more value out of this, and this is something you see very often from him, is just to go ahead and bide his time and wait, and look at this, he's signaling to Arrow that he's got that swipe. Yeah, he's going to actually take his time here, not waste his coin. Or not waste his coin, but not use his coin. He wants to save it for bigger turns, be able to cast an Ancient of Lore on turn six or something like that. He's still going to be able to swipe next turn. And Era, that's got to be a signal to him, but also in the back of his mind, we've talked about this on the show before, sometimes your opponents send you a mixed signal to try to get you to play in a different way, and Purple might be trying to get him to fear swipe here. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what he could be doing. That's going to be in the back of Era's mind, too, but he's still got some great plays if that's what's going to actually be happening here. Uh, you know, the shielded mini bot going to help keep that pressure a little bit on board, but this swipe is going to be absolutely devastating. He didn't use it next turn, but when you're staring at a board like this, I have to believe you want to swipe this turn. Yeah, I believe this swipe is going upstairs. We're going to deal four damage to Era here and clear his board and remove the shield, and you know what? He's got a pretty good curve after this. He's got a five drop. He's got a couple seven drops that he's going to be able to play in turn six. Yeah, but Era's no shortage of, uh, of threats here. I mean, it looks to me like this Sludge Belcher may not even be able to come out next turn. This is just so much pressure that Era's adding to the board. Look at how much damage you have to handle a 5-2 shielded mini bot. I mean, he's got the answers for it, but this is a ton of damage coming in. If all this doesn't get handled right away, this game's over. Yeah, he's already down to nine. He does have a Sludge Belcher to high bind him. You know, an Innervate probably wasn't that bad of a draw there. It's going to allow him to do coin Innervate and play another four draw. Wow, here. that that Innervate was such an important draw right now. Era actually had nine damage uh, between what he had on the board and what's in his hand. But that's not to say that he doesn't have any more damage coming after this. I mean, two of this is direct yeah, damage, so he picks up left. something right here. Leper Gnome, two, three, four, five, six. He's got eight damage total right now. So after sitting behind this Sludge Belcher, Purple may stabilize here at an extremely low life total. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to stabilize it looks to be about one to two life points here over the next couple turns. This, uh, this Leopard Gnome is still going to be able to get some damage in. The Consecration will still be able to get some damage in. But he's going to be able to sit behind this Sludge Belcher and regrow some of his life total here with his Ancient of Lore next turn. Yeah, this attack is really kind of peculiar too. I mean, uh, if you don't pick off this... Uh this shield, there's a chance that your opponent gets something. That excellent draw from Era. that's almost exactly what he wanted to start pushing through this Sludge Belcher. And he's going to have that weapon swing again next turn, and he's also getting a damage through to his opponent's face. So if Purple finds himself in a spot where he doesn't end up healing up next turn, this could be disastrous. 
Yeah, he's going to absolutely have to use this Ancient of Lore to heal. Saren, what a great draw for error here. This True Silver Champion is really good, but he's going to wow. actually consecrate this turn. He wants those True Silvers to go swinging directly to the base, but I mean, in a position like this, it looks like he's going to lose his board. Yeah, he's going to lose his board, but he gets to keep his True Silver around for, for two Down turns here. to one HP is purple. There's that Ancient Lord coming in, gonna heal him up to six. So even if Era can push through this slime, say maybe he draws like an Iron Beak Owl or something, Purple still survives for one more turn. Equality is a terrible draw right now. That would have been great when that Sludge Belcher was on board, but not so much right now. But Purple's in a spot where he's kind of committed to attacking every minion Era plays for the rest of the game. Yeah, he's gonna have to control the board for, as you said, the actual rest of the game, but here's the thing. Purple can turn this game around very, very fast from this spot. Yeah, look at that two copies. Of, I mean, there's so much potential pressure to be added to this board right now. But when you're when you're sitting at six and you're staring down four points of damage, it's with anything like Wolf Rider, Arcane Golem, even a Leroy Jenkins, there's so much scary stuff that can happen from your opponent. He needs to take his time this turn and figure out exactly how much damage he's going to be able to deal. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays this because. The four power weapon over there makes everything a little awkward. He's at six, but if Purple were to play Dr. Boom this turn, he could set up a huge turn of Savage Run here. It wouldn't actually oh. be lethal, but that Ancient of Lore is a big draw here. Yeah, second Ancient of Lore is going to make sure he stays healthy. And look at this, exactly what we see from Purple. He doesn't take, he doesn't really leverage his life total as aggressively as a lot of other people do, much more mindful of the fact that he needs to keep himself with these safe life totals. So he's dropping down to three right here, but that second of Ancient of Lore is going to bring him right back up. But this Cog oh, Hammer- Oh, make a, make a guy first. There you go. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, this Cog Hammer is going to be a real big turning point for him and look at that equality that was a terrible draw but in a position like this you have a 1-1 one, one taunt that has a divine shield it's pretty good yeah arrow with a great top deck there one of the better draws he could have in his deck uh if he has oh is that a savage roar that's a force nature and a savage roar but that's not enough to do it this turn so at this point he's back up to eight hero pose is going to take him to nine but he's going to go back down to eight after attacking this minion i imagine the azure drake is going to be the one sacrificed here uh but he's going to count his damage and figure out exactly which one of these minions is more beneficial to him it might not matter in the long run looks like the extra damage could matter a little bit air is going to drop to 23 and then purple has combo potential next turn yeah, the combo potential next turn means this game might be over pretty fast if Era doesn't draw something super impactful here. And you know what? He's staring down a 5-5 five five and a 5-1. That is a ton of damage coming to him over the next turn. I mean, something like Leroy Jenkins is what he needs right now to get this game over with. And, and our see. second player of the night doing the, the fingers <laughs> cross move here. And he fist pumps afterwards. Era's going to drop down to... Uh, uh, if he would attack this 5-1, he would have dropped down to 18, but that's not enough. Purple is going to have Force of Nature, Savage Roar, with 10 damage already sitting on board. He's going to go up two games to zero. Yeah, what a great game back and forth here. Era bringing a Rush Paladin deck, and you know what? There was that one turn that Purple got to hide behind that Sludge Belter that he got to absorb just enough to stay alive this game. You saw him go all the way down to one or two and still bring out the victory here. Wow. Very what close a game. game. I mean, he's still playing these strategies that have two big game hunters in it. He's trying to target the fact that Era can potentially queue up these these bigger control decks here. Era's queuing up aggro decks instead, and he's still not getting through. The patience that Purple exercised with that swipe, forcing his opponent to underdevelop on turn four, I think that actually might have won him that game. Yeah, it was a very good top deck. It was a great draw that turn. We were talking about how. Uh, how, how Swipe would have been backbreaking in that spot, but he didn't actually have it. Then he drew it and then didn't cast it when he had, you know, a, a coin into, into right. Swipe. It was such a good and great play for him. And as you said, it might have actually won him the game from there. Yeah, leverage his life total early on, so he didn't have to do it as much in the later stages of the game. And again, alleviated that pressure when he had bigger swings that were going forward. And then he drew that very key Innervate so he could utilize both of his Keepers of the Grove. I mean, you know, Fate is kind of deciding a little bit of these matches because he's drawing pretty well, but Era's not drawing poorly either. He's had extremely extremely aggressive starts. It's just that Purple has had just enough resources and has put them into use perfectly to dismantle what Aerith throws at him. Yeah, Aerith's draws were great. He got a ton of damage in early, but Purple, as you said, top deck that swipe, top deck that innervate at the, at the best possible time for allowing him to do multiple things a turn or to clear his board. And it was just a little bit too much for Aerith to overcome. Yeah, Aerith mixing up his strategies here very well. Again, we looked at his stats. You could see that he was tending to favor control, but today he's throwing major majorly different strategies than he was in day one. So excellent stuff from him, just hasn't been working out. When we come back, it's match point for Purple and Air is gonna need three straight to pick this match up. You're watching Hearthstone on PVP Live.